Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be telling you about five Victorian episodical novels. So this is part of my five Victorian novels about series. Um, I'll link the full playlist down below because I've made quite a lot of these now and I really enjoy doing these quick short videos um, talking about five Victorian books on a particular theme. I couldn't think of a way to phrase this title using the word about because the five books I'm going to be talking about today are kind of linked by their structure rather than by a theme. Um, but today I want to tell you about five episodical Victorian novels. And when I say episodical, what I really mean is that these five books don't have like a proper through plot. They might have a few subplots maybe going Going through them a little bit um, but mostly they're made up of separate episodes which could almost be read as individual short stories but not quite. So these books follow the same characters um, but in kind of short episodical bursts I suppose um, where they're doing particular things and then a kind of new episode begins. I know that episodical novels don't really work for everyone but they're something that I really really enjoy um, so I thought I would talk about five Victorian episodical novels today. Um, so we'll start off with I think The Pickwick Papers which is the longest of the episodical novels I have to talk about today by quite a long way. Um, so The Pickwick Papers is by Charles Dickens and this is a very episodical novel. Um, we're following Samuel Pickwick um, who is the kind of head of the Pickwick Club and his friends, the other Pickwickians, Mr. Winkle, Mr. Snodgrass and Mr. Tupman. And we also, um, a little way into the book, meet Mr. Pickwick's new manservant, Sam Weller. Um, and we're basically following these collection of characters as they go on various adventures and strange things happen to them. There are quite a lot of recurring characters who crop up in various different episodes, but the episodes are sort of relatively separate in their own right. Often what happens is Mr. Pickwick and his friends set off to a particular place, something happens in that particular place usually something goes wrong but is like quite embarrassing for all concerned um very very silly humor in the paper papers and then they return from that place they get set off to a new place and a new adventure begins i really enjoy the paper papers it is very very funny and um, in fact pretty much all the books i'm talking about today are funny so i guess that kind of episodical style works really well for humorous writing i suppose um the paper papers is just excellent fun i really enjoy the dynamic between mr pickwick and sam weller and um, i really enjoy all the individual episodes. Mr. Winkle is my favourite of the other Pickwickians. He is very, very funny. Mr. Winkle um, pretends that he's really, like, sporty and outdoorsy, but he's absolutely not, so there's lots of very entertaining bits of Mr. Winkle um, pretending he's good at things that he's not good at and terrible things ensuing, and it's just very, very entertaining. So I highly recommend the Pickwick Papers. It is great fun. The next one I want to mention is My Flirtations by Ella Hepworth Dixon. Um, I read this very recently and I really, really enjoyed it. It's a very short book, very quick read. Probably only took me sort of two Two hours to get through and it basically is um 13 accounts of the various flirtations that the narrator has had in her life and um, so she takes us through the 13 men that she has had a flirtation or some kind of vague courtship with and all of their like faults and flaws um and the various silly things that happened as she was flirting with them is very entertaining and very good fun um, and the narrator also has a sister who has um much less interested in flirting and men than her and it's just like always in the background rolling her eyes which I found very very entertaining and the whole book is just written in this really fun light entertaining tone while also like making quite like astute observations about like the silliness around um ideas of courtship in the Victorian period um, and I just really recommend my flirtations I thought it was great fun. Next, I want to mention Diary of a Nobody by George and Whedon Grossmith. Um, this is a book which is set up as a fictional diary following um, a man by the name of Charles Pooter, um, who is kind of from the lower middle classes, but has like pretensions of grandeur slash like wants to be fancier than he is. And um, so a lot of the humour revolves around him and his wife, like trying to be um, more respectable and more like posh than they are. They also have a son, a young man who um, gets into trouble sometimes and we meet him too. Um, and basically this book is Mr. Pooter's fictional diary. So we hear about the various scopes he gets into, various things that go wrong. Um, I feel like this has a very similar tone to the Pickwick papers, though it is much shorter and the kind of class dynamics in it are a bit different. 
But I think kind of class is looked at in a really, really interesting way in The Diary of a Nobody. You know, the point of the title, Diary of a Nobody, is that Charles Peter is someone who is not considered important, but that doesn't mean that his life isn't interesting, um, which I kind of like as a as a premise. Um, and Charles Peter is just very entertaining, as are all the various antics that happened over the course of the book. Like I said, very episodic, just the little strange things that happen in his life um, and the little entertaining episodes. And it is very, very funny and very good fun. The next one I want to mention is Three Men in a Boat by Jerome K. Jerome. This is another very humorous Victorian novel. And um, I listened to this in an audiobook, which worked really well for me. And this is a book about what happens when three men go on a boating trip um, and none of them are very good at boating and various things go wrong. And along the way, they meet various different people, various different things happen, very, very episodic as they journey up the Thames. I found Three Men in the Boat very entertaining and very good fun, um, especially the kind of like ridiculousness of the characters. I feel like I love the other four that I'm mentioning in this video more than Three Men in a Boat, but I did find it a really, really enjoyable read. And I think if you like that kind of Victorian episodical silliness, then you will really enjoy Three Men in a Boat. Then finally, I want to mention Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell, which I love very, very much and is a really wonderful read. Cranford, like the other four I've just mentioned, um, is very, very funny, but it also has its more like moving, somber passages as well. Um, but I think the balance works really well in Cranford. So Cranford is told from the first person perspective of a young woman um, who has gone to stay with older family friends um, in the town of Cranford. And in Cranford, um, all the kind of gentle folk, the polite society are women, mostly older women, um, a lot of whom don't have very much money, but um, make a great effort to maintain their respectability and show that they are still gentle folk. Um, they are still ladies. And a lot of Cranford is about kind of um, the difficulty of these older women um, without much resources, without much ability to earn their own income, trying to like prove that they are still respectable um, and it's about all of the various antics that these older women get up to um, the various silly things that happen to them and although it is told from the first person perspective of a younger woman she is mostly there like as an observer it's not really about her I think that a lot of people when they want to read Elizabeth Gaskell end up starting with Cranford because it is pretty short but actually I feel like sometimes people end up being surprised by or um, struggling with the episodic nature of Cranford but I think it works really well and all the individual episodes um, I just really enjoy. I also think The Cranford is a really great novel for being very, very funny, very witty, um, with some great silly moments, but also, like I said, having its darker moments. Like I said, it's looking at old women who have sort of limited financial resources. So, you know, this book does look at illness and death and sort of financial problems. Um, and I just think it's a really powerful, wonderful book while also having like all that episodic fun. So I really recommend Cranford and I really recommend the other four books I've mentioned today. Do let me know down in the comments if you've read any other episodical Victorian novels because it's something I really enjoy and that's all for now thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video